March 28, 2021 Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion A reading from the book of Isaiah The Lord has given me a well-trained tongue for me to know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, he makes my ear alert to listen like a disciple. The Lord our God has opened my ear, and I have not resisted. I have not torn away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who have blocked my beard, and I have not turned my face away from insult and spitting. The Lord God comes to my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face to the most hard rock, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, becoming as human likeness, and found human being in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient into death, even death on the cross. And because of this, God raised him high and gave him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Christ Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, so the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest Jesus by treachery and have him put to death. But they said, Not during the festival, for fear that there may be a riot among the people. And when he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, he was at the table when a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly perfumed oil pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the oil on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, Why waste of this perfumed oil? Perfumed oil like this could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii and gave it to the poor. And they murmured against her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you molest her? She had done a good thing upon me. For the poor have always with you. And you can be kind to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. In truth, I tell you, wherever throughout all the gospel is proclaimed, what she had done will be told as well, in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went off a chief priest to hand Jesus over to them. They were delighted to hear it and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house. The teacher says, Where is my guest room for me to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished with couches sent ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went their way into the city and they found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. When they were eating at the table, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you who ate with me will betray me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I, he said to them, one of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the sand of man indeed goes that it is written of him, but who to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed? It would be better for that man if he had not been born.
While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a chalice, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of a new covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, that I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until the day when I shall drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went forth to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken this night, for it is written, I will strike at the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. That after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, but not I. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, Even this night before the cock crow twice, you will deny me thrice. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should tie together with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke the same. Then they came to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to fear and be distressed. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Stay here and keep watch. When he was gone forward a little, he fell to the ground and prayed that if it might be the hour will pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are passable to you. Take this chalice away from me, but not what I will, but you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for an hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Going away again, he prayed, saying the same words. When he returned, he found them asleep again, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to the sinners. Rise up, let us go. Behold, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, comes Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, together with a crowd with swords and staves from the chief priests, scribes, and elders. His betrayer had given a sign, saying, The man I shall kiss, that is he. Arrest him and led him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. They laid hands on him and arrested him. One of them that stood by drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them, Have you come out as to a robber with swords and staves to seize me? I was with you daily teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. Then his disciples left him and all fled away. A young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his naked body. They seized him, but he left the linen cloth behind and fled from them naked. And they brought Jesus to the high priest, and all the priests, the scribes, and the elders gathered together. Peter followed him at a distance, even into the high priest's courtyard, and he sat with the servants at the fire and warmed himself. The chief priests and council sought for evidence against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, and their evidences were not agreeing. Some standing up testifying against him, saying, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. But their witness did not agree, and the high priest rising up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Have you no answer to the things that are laid charge against you by these men? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, Son of the Blessed God? And Jesus said to him, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power of God, in coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his garments and said, 
What need we for any further witness? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him to be guilty of death. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophecy! And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was in the court below, one of the high priest's servants came along. When she had seen Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You two were with the Nazarene Jesus, but he denied, saying, I neither know nor understand what you said. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. Again a servant saw him and began to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystander said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and swear, I know not of these men of whom you are talking. And quickly the cock crowed again. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had told him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. Straight away in the morning, the chief priest with the elders and the scribes, the entire Sanhedrin held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate questioned him again. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you. But Jesus still answered nothing, and Pilate wondered. Now on the festival day, Pilate was wont to release to them one of the prisoners whom they demanded. And there was one called Barabbas who was in prison along with some seditious men who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to demand him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priest handed him over out of envy. But the chief priest teared up the crowd that he should rather release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted, Crucify him, Pilate said to them. Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted out the more, Crucify him! And so Pilate, willing to satisfy the crowd, he released to them Barabbas, and after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away into the court of palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole band. They clothed him in purple, waved a crown of thorns, and placed it on his head. And they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! They kept striking his head with a reed, and they did spit on him. They knelt before him, they adored him, and after they had mocked him, they stripped off the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to be crucified. And they forced Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed and coming in from the city, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, interpreted as the place of Calvary. They gave him wine mingled with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. It was the third hour when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against him was written over, the king of the Jews. And with him they also crucified two thieves, one on his right and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, And with the wicked he was reputed. Those who passed by reviled him, wagging their heads, saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple of God, and in three days build it up again. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests said with the scribes to one another, He save others, he cannot save himself. Let Christ the King of Israel come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were also crucified with him reviled him. At noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, 
which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on the reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and when the centurion who stood over facing him saw how he breathed his last, said, Truly, this man was a son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, son of Jose, and Salome. These women had followed him, ministered to him, and many other women that came up with him to Jerusalem. When evening came, since it was a day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a noble member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. But Pilate wondered if he should be already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus was already dead. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Joseph, having bought a fine linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in the tomb that had been hewed out of the rock. And he rolled a stone to the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.